We could fulfill your deepest desires, too. I want to say this episode was made to prompt fans who watch the show to also watch the live-action films, but honestly, I don't even know why this episode was made. I go over the countless reasons why Alien Swarm can't fully be canon in my breakdown of that film, yet this episode references this film so heavily that you really do need to see it in order for this to make sense. It barely takes the time to reintroduce everything and jumps right back into continuing the plot of Alien Swarm, which was a pretty bold move, but also a bit confusing to the average viewer. Elena going off to train at the Plumber's Academy sounds like an interesting development, but her personality is entirely different from the film. This could have something to do with her being possessed by the Nanite Queen, though. Oh, and the twist that Elena was the real Nano Queen is a twist for the sake of a twist. The Alien Swarm Queen being a fake doesn't add anything to the story, and this episode would be the same without it, so the change was kinda pointless. And since that makes the original Queen moot, and now Victor has been killed off, this feels like they brought all these characters back just to destroy their only defining traits. A saving grace would have been at least to cast the film stars as their animated counterparts, like what they did with Ben's parents, but no dice. They don't even call them nanochips anymore either. This isn't about the microchips. And those alien microchips that were controlling him? Alien microchips. Microchips? Microchips. What, are we gonna start calling this guy Micromech? Also, what an insanely missed opportunity to not even use Nanomech in this one. But on a positive note, after UA constantly reminds us what a terrible couple Ben and Julie are, this episode allows Ben to try to take some responsibility and be self-aware enough to care for Julie's needs. It feels like like I'm always running off somewhere, doesn't it? Can we get together tomorrow night? For sure. He even turns down investigating with Kevin to make sure he can commit to the date, and in return, it's Julie's understanding of what it's like to love Ben that gets through to Elena. Then you never really cared about Ben. I did! Isn't there some part of you left that still cares enough to stop this? But a few appearances later, it's back to fighting. We've seen Ben deal with sleep issues before, along with talk about his nightmares. Sometimes when I eat late at night, I have nightmares so real, I wake up hitting the Ultimatrix. And we see that continue in this episode, too. It's nice when the series shows us what tolls the hero life takes on Ben outside of missions. But again, Elena barely feels like herself in this film, and she was already a character we had to get used to fast the first time around. Surprisingly, for the most part, Ben never engages with any of Elena's advancements. I'm so glad we're going to be together now. Working together, Elena. Even though a few episodes earlier, he was openly willing to disregard Julie for a girl he just met. Ben's sudden loyalty is admirable, but strange. Kevin is aggressively sexist in this episode, too. But she's gonna be a problem. I've seen the type before. Usually Kevin's awful advice comes from dim-wittedness, but here, he seems more sincere in these views, even when speaking directly to Gwen. That's just the way girls are. You gotta take advantage, play one against the other. It doesn't even come off like it's supposed to be a joke, either. Kevin's just extra terrible in this episode. It was neat seeing Elena's bike from the movie, though. But as for the chips, they're much larger and look different. They're less like a swarm of bugs and don't create any interesting shapes or traps, aside from mimicking Victor and Ben's car. The animation on them is very nice, though. They never look clunky and always seem to be very detailed. But other than the chips, this episode's animation is another one that feels very basic. It's been a while since we've had a really good fight scene, so if you were hoping for one in this episode, keep looking. The only importance it has is the cool factor, now that the films are referenced in the show, which is a chance most franchises don't usually get, but the story is very self-contained. The idea of Alien Swarm having its story continued in this episode was a great hook, but UA Season 3's poor execution strikes again and makes this another inevitating story this season. To reference the film so heavily only to rain on their legacy story is a very odd choice. I guess it makes the film more important, but this was not a pleasant follow-up. The Nanites got her a long time ago. You're wrong. There was enough of my friend left to save my life. 